All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Buff Show. Today I have Jessica Rivera here with Jessica Rivera Interior Homes. Yeah, just interiors. Interiors, yeah. okay. Yeah. So Jessica's amazing. Thank She's you. been our designer or stager on the past few houses, and we've just been super impressed with her. So we wanted to bring her on to go over the importance of staging a home before you're getting ready to sell. Yes. So... Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Stoked to have you. We just were uh, staging a house yesterday together. We so, were, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so she's a trooper and does an amazing job. So I'm excited to share some of her knowledge and insights on that process. So let's jump in and let's just go over like who you are, your background, and go from there. Sure. Um, so I'm actually from Michigan. We have been out here for about 15 years now. Oh, wow. I actually don't have any formal training in design, believe it or that not. That is crazy. My degree is actually in psychology from Montana State University. Uh, you told me that yesterday, and I was like, that's interesting. It is it is interesting, isn't it? It's kind of a unique turn of events. But I do think that there is a lot of overlap and a lot of, a lot of knowledge that I have that relates to being an efficient and effective home stager. Right. I think inadvertently our homes really become an extension of who we are. Mm -hmm. And I'm fascinated by who we are and right. why we get to be who we are. Right. And so homes are just inherently fascinating to me. I think every home has a story and every person has a story. So I actually was a stay-at-home mom for a long time until my children were old enough to go to school more day, you know, more hours mm -hmm. in the day than they were with me. Right. And at that point in time, I decided to try and pursue staging and design. It was always something I kind of tinkered with as mm -hmm. a hobby. But I thought there is going to be only one way to find out if this is something that I really want to pursue. And so I just went for it, actually. Um, at the That's time, awesome. one of my best friends, who was a hairstylist, went back and got her real estate license. And so kind of like serendipitously, she started hiring me to stage her listings. Oh, cool. And so it was, it was, and still is like very, just a beautiful dynamic. Yeah. And that is kind of really how I got my start into staging. Huh. And so, you know, building your portfolio and then really just getting referrals. I don't really advertise. It's just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's always a huge compliment when people refer me because yeah. they like what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. How long have you been doing home staging? Um, so I think we're coming up on seven years now. Oh, wow. I know, right? That's crazy. It is crazy. That's <laughs> awesome. You're pretty, uh, you, you've done this for a minute. I have. Yeah. yeah, I have. And it's, I don't know, it, it just, it's fascinating to me because again, the, the parallels that sit between you know, people and their homes and how we evolve, how that evolution is reflected in our dwellings. Yeah. It, it continues to hold my attention right. and keeps me very curious. And I'm always, you know, kind of checking out like, you know, what's on social media, what what trends are coming in, yeah. what what speaks to me. Because they change so often. They do. Too. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. So it is important um, definitely to stay on top of those because mm -hmm. that's, you know, we want to stay current and right. relevant. So. Right. Yeah. No, that's so cool. So let's jump into it. Like, what yeah. is staging, like home staging? Because there's, I think it's often confused, like you have design, like interior design and staging. Like, what are they and what's the differences and like, what is staging? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's a great place to start. So I think the biggest differentiation is staging is really what we're doing pre-listing. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing to get a house ready. And you and I were kind of speaking to, really, I think there's a broad spectrum that sits within staging. Yeah. Um, so you can stage a house that's completely vacant. Mm -hmm. You can stage a house that is occupied. Mm -hmm. Within an occupied staging, you can stage just a couple of rooms. There are lots of times when I will come in and just add to existing furniture with maybe some, you know, soft goods or soft mm -hmm. staging. So we're just bringing in, you know, maybe kind of some extra, some accessories, some rugs, some pillows, um, that type of thing. So so a house doesn't necessarily have to be vacant to be staged. To stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think cool. it's like, this is your, your job interview for mm -hmm. your house. And yeah. so if you think about kind of the parallels that sit with 
how would you get ready for a job interview, right? right. You're going to make sure that things are clean and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and you're dressed well and right. you present well and all right. the things. That's really what we're doing for your house yeah. when we're looking at staging. Yeah. And I think if we, you know, look at that versus interior design, interior design is really something, um, it's a, an entirely separate service. We're going to see a lot more. Staging just kind of gives us some framework yeah. of possibilities. Right. Interior design is really when we're kind of diving into a lot more specific things, mm -hmm. and that, that could potentially be something that transpires after a home is acquired and right. you, and you and you walk in there and and maybe it was staged and all the stuff is gone and mm -hmm. you're like oh my gosh that was amazing and yeah. I wish I would have bought all of it but I right. didn't and so yeah. now how am I going to you know have this home reflect yeah you know the things that I love and yeah. how I want it to look so it's almost like design is making the house your home yeah. like how you want it and yeah. staging is like getting the house ready to sell. It's getting ready to find that house a new home. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic differentiation. And, I mean, a lot of people think like, oh, well, I already have furniture in my house. Like, it's it's basically ready to go. But mm -hmm. like, the more I've done, because I started out and I didn't do a lot of staging. I just didn't know a lot about like what really helps home sell. And I liked your example of like, it's it's your job interview. I, let, I tell a lot of my clients, it's like you're like the dating world is completely different than when I was dating. Like I didn't have Tinder and all these other apps that you basically create a profile. That's yeah. like, that's what people see. But the house is the same way. Like you're, you're yeah, creating this dating app for your house, trying to see who wants to come and marry it. And if it doesn't look amazing, yeah, then you're not going to get very many people to come and look at it or your, your views are going to go way down. It's true. So First impressions are everything in real estate, and I think people bypass that way too much. They just go, oh, well, it looks good enough. Or Also, I think a lot of times you're in your house, like you see things and it just becomes normal to you, and you mm -hmm. don't see what could be different to make it look better. Yeah. And I always tell people, too, like a staged house isn't a home you live in. Right. The functionality and everything is totally different. It is. So let's dive into it. Yeah. Who needs staging? Who would you say needs it? Does almost every house need it, or...? I I don't think it hurts to to do at least a consultation. Yeah. Because I love what you said when you spoke to really what sits in the gift of perspective. Right. And when you are really just in a space day in and day out, you lose that gift, mm -hmm. right? It, because you're comfortable in it and it's, you know, it's imbued with all the all the things that are meaningful to you. Right. And so if there is one thing I could speak to in regards to the benefit of, of having staging done, not only does it offer additional perspective about things, but it's also, it really has to do with a shift, right? Mm -hmm. Because now your home is a product. Right. And so we really kind of have to move in reverse a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so all that time, love, care, and attention, you know, you, you put into making this a very curated, beautiful home for you. We kind of have to start to undo that a little bit, right. as in the dating app where, you know, we just kind of have to scale back a little bit. And I think hiring a stager to come in and at the very least give you some feedback on what we can do is a fantastic starting point. Sometimes you've got some great stuff. A lot of times you've got some great stuff. But maybe we need to shift the layout a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we need to edit a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think as humans, we've got kind of a tenuous relationship with our stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and we love our stuff, but also sometimes that stuff can create a bit of a burden. For sure. Because we don't quite know when enough is enough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so that is probably one of the biggest pieces of feedback or advice that I have as I'm walking into people's homes is, is we kind of need to start cutting back a little bit. Maybe just because there's a, an empty space doesn't necessarily mean we have to fill it. Right. Like your eye needs a place to rest. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, for sure. And so I think that also becomes, you know, mutually beneficial in the way that you're really being very proactive because if you're going to start moving anyways, why not start the edit now and yeah. start getting stuff packed up? Because then it makes that process far more manageable mm -hmm. than if you're saving it till the very end. Right. So what are some of the top things you like recommend people pull down? Not declutter, but like 
uh, minimalize with. I always say like family pictures, religious pictures, like all of that stuff. Yes. Like yes. Pull it down. Um, yes. You don't want people to walk into your home and be able to profile you, right. so to speak. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're staging has a lot to do with neutralizing things mm-hmm. where we're again, where this just becomes a product now. Right. And I think that's a that kind of goes back to the point that you made about, you know, well, I like the stuff and, you know, I've got furniture in here and I've got pictures up. What's the problem? Right. Well, there could be a number of different problems that yeah. that sit in that. For starters, it's hard for potential buyers to visualize themselves in a home that's completely filled with all of your your family right. and your special Feels interests. Like your home, not their home. Correct. Right. Yes. And so that's why it's really nice to invite a third party in to kind of give you some of that feedback. It's it's not personal and yeah. that's really hard because home is such a personal place yeah. that's right where your degree comes into handy bingo that's where it is handy and so you know i think that that feedback is important because again we're, we're just looking at how can we curate and bring to market this beautiful product right because i think with the advent of social media we are we have a, a fairly heavy perseveration with perfection and, right. and how things look and how, you know, we want to be perceived and, you know, what is visually appealing and mm-hmm. what that visual appeal then, you know, starts to encourage within us. Right. So yeah. it is important to have your home looking the best it possibly can because, of course, the more people you get through the house, it becomes a numbers game. Then the right. more opportunity that sits to get an offer because yeah. you've increased foot traffic. Yeah. I always get frustrated when I'm showing a house and the sellers have pictures of their family and like just all these pictures up and my clients every time they go right to the pictures and they look and they're like oh do I know these people and sometimes they do they're like oh that's that's uh like I went to high school with her sister and you're like oh my gosh we're here to look at the house it's like yeah and and then that's a great point it's easy for people to get distracted that way and then you're right if you get profiled like if you have religious stuff or even sports stuff I mean if you have a BYU picture up or something and, and somebody sure. doesn't like BYU, then they could it could leave a bad taste in their mouth after seeing your house. Like 100%. There's just, there's just different things like that that people don't think about. Sure. You want your house to look just like a house. That's it. We're like putting it in reverse. Yeah, right. yeah, totally. And that's that's a good, like yesterday you were telling me that, like going backwards in reverse. Can you touch on that a little bit? Because that was so good what you were saying yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So... I mean, when we're talking about curating a home, it gets to be very much a reflection of who we are, yeah. what we love, our sports teams, um, our family pictures, all the things. And so I think it's important as you're getting ready to list your house to actually kind of start to go in reverse. You got to put that in reverse a little bit. So pull stuff down. Yeah, you got to pull the, the basics. Go back to the basics. Our goal with, with, staging is to really make this appealing to the masses Mm -hmm. and so that's a little bit tricky because again you love your house right I mean there's well maybe you don't anymore maybe you're moving and you're like peace out like Mm -hmm. I'm I'm over this or maybe you're doing the upgrade or whatever that looks like but the psychology major in me is like you know it's important to kind of start detaching a little bit for sure and there's a an emotional process that is involved in that and there's also a physical process that is involved in that and so it is important to remember that you know all those things that you love might not be all those things that everybody else loves right yeah so I just wanted to throw in there too because you mentioned it like everybody basically should have at least a consultation even if you Mm -hmm. had your house like professionally designed five years ago when you built it and now you're going to resell it's still a good idea to have somebody come in from a stager's perspective and be like hey let's get different bedding in here let's rearrange the living room this way because from a camera's angle it's going to look you know so much better and it'll capture yeah the ain't like the room versus seeing the back of the couch or something like that i think i think people just don't think about that yeah and then pulling down all your stuff like everybody I've never seen somebody that was selling a house that didn't have stuff that they needed to or could have pulled down oh absolutely like everybody has and I I would say most people are probably 25 to 50 percent of their stuff could come down 
At least. Yeah. Yeah. I I told you as Americans, I, we really love our stuff. Yeah. We really do. It's it's very comforting. It's reaffirming. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes it home. It makes it feel like home. Yeah. And I, I'm chuckling right now because actually probably a month ago, my parents were getting ready to sell their house. And so I am walking through as I do, and I asked them about updating the paint colors. The colors that they picked were very specific to their tastes. They were pretty, but maybe not appealing, maybe not everybody's idea of pretty. Right. My dad is also a very avid hunter and had a massive elk hanging on the wall <laughs> upstairs <laughs> and about five deer head downstairs. Oh yeah, that's... And so, I, so then you get like that's a great example because yeah. you get somebody that's like anti hunting and then sure. they instantly, oh, I hate this house. Like it gives them a bad feeling. It is immediately a reason to disconnect. Right. And I thank you for speaking to that point because that is exactly what we're hoping to do with, with staging is we are wanting to give people reasons to connect mm-hmm. with the house. Maybe the maybe the layout is kind of weird. Maybe right. it's a little bit dated. There could be a myriad of things that staging actually can come in, and it keeps the eye moving, and yeah. we're showcasing what possibilities are. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Yeah. And so instead of walking into a house, looking at a family picture, perseverating on your sister's ex who done right. you wrong two years ago, exactly. <laughs> now it actually gives you a chance to really focus on what the potential of right. the house is and what all the possibilities that sit within that. Mm-hmm. And so now you're really focused more on the house, not on, you know, the the pictures or the um, wall mount, yeah. you know, the animals, the mm-hmm. taxidermy, right. all the things. And you know what? You might find somebody who loves that, but you might somebody, find somebody who is really put off by that. Yeah. So we just want to... A neutral. Just neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just you want your bedroom to look like a bedroom, mm-hmm. like a bed, like you don't need any other things in there, just like a cozy, comfy bedroom or a kitchen or, yes. you know, yeah. just, you know what that room or that space is meant for yeah. and it looks good. And then they can picture like, oh, we could put the moose head here or whatever they're into, Whatever. like it's blank slate and they can put up whatever they want. From yes. There. Yeah. A hundred percent. So what does the process look like if somebody's like, hey, we're getting ready to sell. We're open to the idea because I always ask people like it's it's an uncomfortable process. It will get you whenever I have a listing presentation, there's price and there's your comfort. Mm -hmm. And depending on how uncomfortable you're willing to get, it will invertedly affect the price. The more uncomfortable you get the higher the price you'll be able to get. <laughs> and some so people true. just don't want to get uncomfortable, but most yeah. people are okay with do a, like a console or like even just like having you come in and show them what they could do better with their own stuff and yeah. not bringing in any other stuff yeah. can make a world of difference. So yeah. maybe walk us through what the process looks like and like if they were to call you. Sure. Yeah. And I, I love what you spoke to about actually sitting down to be proactive about walking into uncomfortability. Yeah. Boy, for me, like I am a huge Brene Brown fan and being the, you know, the, the person I am who really is very inquisitive about behavior and yeah. why we do what we do. Like there is no growth without uncomfortability. Right. But I think as a, an agent that speaks to your skill set as well to be able to kind of gauge mm-hmm. what that looks like yeah. because, you know, that could really sour the relationship if you're pushing for something that, that they're not maybe ready for. Yeah, and maybe they don't care about the extra sure. 10 or 20 or 50 grand that they could make. If yeah, it who needs better. that? It's yeah. just money. Right. We, nobody really wants extra yeah. money. That's <laughs> I mean, nice. I've, I've seen people that are like, the money is less on the priority scale, which is crazy. They're out there. But yeah, most people I would say want a good balance between the two. Oh, absolutely. And I think with some really great communication, that's entirely possible. Yeah. And so if you were to call me, typically it's a call from an agent, but sometimes it can be, you know, just from uh, just your average person get kind of getting ready to, to list a house. I would... Definitely start with the consultation Mm -hmm. because I'm doing really the same thing you're doing. Right. What is our goal here and how are we going to take steps to achieve that goal? Mm -hmm. So typically if a if a person would like to do a consultation, we find a time to to meet at the house and I like to be able to actually go through the house room by room to to kind of 
give feedback on what I think could showcase that room in the best possible light. Mm -hmm. And so I always appreciate the people who are willing to trust me enough to invite me into their homes because that really is a very sacred space. That's uncomfortable, yeah. And it can be really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody really likes to get... you know, negative feedback per se, but sometimes that negative feedback actually ends up being really valuable. Right. And sometimes it's not even as negative as you think. Sometimes it's like, oh, I think maybe we could pull a couple things out of this room. Yeah. Oh, I think maybe if we added, you know, Mm -hmm. some throw pillows and a rug and we kind of decided on a color story, that's another piece of what staging can do is is sometimes it's not bringing any additional furniture in. Actually, most times it's like we probably need to take some things out. Exactly, yeah. Um, That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Well, and I don't even think it would be, like I don't think people should look at it as negative or positive. They should almost walk in or go into it like they're buying a house and they just hired a home inspector to pick out all the flaws. Mm -hmm. You're expecting the home inspector to come back with like a laundry list of things to do. Sure. So like, even if you were to say, Hey, Peyton, I want to sell my house right now. I'm sure you would have a massive laundry list of things you would do on your own house Mm -hmm. to get it ready to sell. So it's like, I don't think anybody escapes like, Oh, I have a perfect house ready to sell from day one. No, everybody, everybody's house, mine included. Like if I were to sell, I would have, a ton of things that mm-hmm. I would do, including furniture and moving things around just because it's not fu- like a, a staged home isn't a functional home. That's not a home that I would live in and enjoy with my family. But if I wanted to sell it, I would definitely do that to get the higher ROI. Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah. It's not about you anymore. Yeah. And that's that's the really tricky part of walking through that process is, again, it's we're going from home to house. Yeah. And we're really we're inviting somebody in who can kind of help us along the path of scrutinizing the product. Right. And if you're able to kind of start detaching and and letting go a little bit of, of home, then we really want to, it, it, it's really akin to how a store merchandises things. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We're really in a sense, kind of merchandising your home, so to speak. We just want to, neutralize it and we want it to appeal to the masses and we want people to see the possibility of what it could be. Yeah. We want to get as many people through there. Absolutely. As we can. We want to strike as many eyeballs on the house as we can and just push people in there. Yeah. Going over like how staging helps a house. Do you have any stats like on numbers or things that it does? What are some of the stats behind staging a house? And the the benefits. Yeah, that's a great question. Obviously, I'm a little biased to the positive impacts of staging, but but there's, you know, some evidence that is going to back up my bias for you. So a lot of the stats I acquired off of uh, Architectural Digest, which, you know, is a a very reputable, they've been along for a long time. They're really interested in homes too. Yeah. So according to them, 40% of home buyers uh, were more willing to visit a staged home that they saw online. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. And so, again, if we're looking at, um, I think probably the two biggest benefits of home staging is we're, we're getting more foot traffic, right. right? And the other big benefit of that is less days on market. Right. According to their research, uh, homes that are not staged, average days on market are 184 days. Wow. Versus a staged home, which is 23. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Just a little bit of a difference there. Jeez. Yeah. Well... Yes. And, you know, again, coming up on our third job together, at least the first two, I think you can you can testify to sure. that impacting, you, you know, the listings that I staged for you. I mm-hmm. mean, that was that that mountain green home was incredible. I think yeah. that was what, a week, less yeah. than two weeks. I mean, it was yeah, it was less than two weeks. And we yeah. had it, I think, three, two and a half weeks. We had it sold like closed. Yeah. And it was crazy. It was it was a one point two million dollar home. Yeah. Like a big price point. It was a big price yeah. point, yeah. And it was empty. We Like, you did a lot of work on that one. Yeah. But it paid off. Like, that one, I'm like, I was telling the sellers, and this was in January. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, be ready. <laughs> All this of the odds could... were against us, exactly. really, if you said, because the market was kind of also a little bit, you know, yeah. unsteady. Like, rates were super high. Like, yeah. Like, they still are. Like, it was a bad time to to try and sell a house yeah. or a more challenging time. We got it pulled off. So we yeah. did. Yeah. And another great point. I mean, you're looking at 
you know, one of the other big benefits, of course, is return on investment. I mean, you're right. looking at anywhere from an additional one to 5%. Mm-hmm. So if you just took a half a million dollar listing, you're looking at potentially an extra five to $25,000. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a good chunk of change. Right. I, I just did a stage of house over in Syracuse and it, it wasn't a new build. There wasn't anything, you know, super shiny and you know, appealing inherently. It had been lived in. It was in a nice neighborhood, but that ended up going for $20,000 over asking. Wow. And it was less than two weeks. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I there, I think that, you know, there definitely is some some good s- statistics to, to back up. Do you have any other ones you want to throw out there? Yeah. Yeah, a couple more. So I, I thought it was important to kind of note because I um, have a lot of friends who are agents and I have seen a lot of content specific to some of the differences in like millennials and Gen Xers. And, yeah. and, and I, I think that's kind of fascinating because right. I, I do think that there probably is generally generationally some different things that impact buying choices. For sure. Yeah. Um, but according to architectural architectural digest, the younger generations consider staging extremely or very important. And so you're looking at 48% of Gen Z and 40% of millennial buyers. And so that's a pretty good piece of the market, I think, to be considering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They probably are fairly influenced by social media. Right. And so I think even in just kind of some of the cool tours that are happening, some of the droning, I mean, Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're really playing to that market, right? For sure, because they're very influenced by perception and social media. Right. So, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. What's like the average cost for staging a house? Would you say? Um, that's a great question, and so I can't speak to how other stagers do it, but for me, I kind of let the agent and or the you know the the homeowner in the driver's seat. Yeah. So if you're looking at order of importance for staging, because there are, you don't necessarily have to stage a whole house. No, you really yeah. don't. You have, there are specific rooms that have more influence than others. For right. sure, the living, living room, family room, kitchen, kitchen yeah. dining, and a master bedroom. Yeah. And so sometimes I just am going in and staging a couple of rooms. Mm-hmm. And that, I'm fine to do that. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is just what is our first impression? Right. Right? Like... Again, we talked about the job interview and, and, you know, really the first rooms that you see should be the ones that you're considering staging. Right. So. And, and that's the ones that we've done. Like, I think you've done the past, the first two you did living room, kitchen, dining room, and the master. Mm-hmm. And then we digital, digitally staged the other two bedrooms, which was worked out great. Yeah. And then the house in Kaysville, the same thing. This last one, we had furniture in most of the other rooms, so you did more of like a fluff staging right. throughout the house. Yeah. And then we did the master. Right. It worked out great. Yeah. Yes. I would say those are by far the, the top three. But sometimes if you're, you know, mindful of, of budget, maybe it's just two. Yeah. You know, but you definitely want to make sure you're staging the right two. Right. For sure. And for me, cost is really driven on how, how big are the rooms? Right. How much furniture do yeah. I need to, to bring in? But most of the time, like like two to three grand would get you yeah. a fantastic like package. Yeah, it would. Um, and and really help out. The other thing to keep in mind is there is a time frame in which like the furniture can stay there. Typically you're like 30, 45 days. Yeah. And that has kind of fluctuated for me based on really the market. Yeah. Which I think, I don't know, for, for me, it's important to be able to have a really good working relationship with the agents yeah. that I'm working with. And I think also Really just in the grander scheme of life, it's important to be flexible. Right. So when the market was kind of crazy, it was like 30 days. And most of the time I was, you know, sometimes yeah. it was like two weeks and they're right. like, all right, we're closing. Get your yeah. stuff out. Right. <laughs> yeah. But now that things have shifted, um, I have shifted to a 45 day rental because I had a couple agents ask me about it and I pondered it. And I thought, you know what, that is really, really important to be able to you know, have that kind of rapport with the agents that are supporting me. I want to have this be mutually beneficial for both of us. Right. So for me, it's it's 45 days, but other companies, it might be 30 days. And, yeah. and if you need extra time with it, you know, you can always rent beyond that time too. Right. So, 
Yeah. There's options. Yeah. It is, it is a flexible, like depending on what you need, you can pay for what you need there. That's it. Yeah. And the biggest thing for me is like getting the right marketing to launch the house. If you have to pull staging and the house still hasn't sold, it's not ideal, but Mm -hmm. like at least you have the right marketing to like get the people in the door. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause that's, that's the biggest thing um, versus not having the right marketing and then having it staged. Like it, it doesn't really benefit you that much because everybody is just viewing things online and then deciding if they want to go see it, not vice versa. A hundred percent. And it's important to get the order of operations right on that one. Exactly. You don't always, um, but we're going to, you know, return to how uncomfortable learning can be. Right. <laughs> Exactly. And that's what makes it memorable, right? Exactly. <laughs> so what are the what are maybe the top three things if somebody's getting ready to sell, mm-hmm. what are the top three things you would recommend they do to get ready to sell staging wise? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I really love to emphasize the three D's. And so we're looking at declutter, depersonalize, and deep clean. <laughs> I love it. Those three go a really, really long way. Yeah. Declutter, for sure. I mean, we want to showcase space always. Yeah. And you can't, it's like you can't run a marathon if you're a chain smoker. You right. can't showcase space if your rooms are full Chuckful. of stuff. Right. Yeah. So it is important to go through and edit. And again, I think it also really actually lends itself to the process of moving because there's a lot of inherent stress to it. So to me, it always seems a little, it feels a little bit better to be proactive instead of reactive. Right. So if you've got the time, which is, that's tricky. I mean, most of us are, are working, we've got kids, and there's a lot of demands. But also, if you make it manageable, that's something that's attainable. So maybe right. it's just, you know, start with three boxes. Just start with three boxes in one room. And the things that you're not using, just make it a manageable process. Mm-hmm. So for sure, declutter. Like we talked about depersonalizing. Um, Pulling down all the pictures, yeah. religious stuff. Yep. All the things that... Taxidermy. T- yeah. Massive elk heads. Yeah. yeah. Those are, those got to go down. <laughs> Love you, uh, Dad. Right. Those got to go down. <laughs> <laughs> and then deep clean. This is one that I think is often actually overlooked because it seems like, nah, that couldn't have that big of an impact. Right. But it does. Yeah. And one of the things that I think is important to convey as you work on the deep clean is I think it's important that when people are walking through your house that they see that the home has been well cared for. Right. And if cleaning is overlooked, in my mind, I'm wondering, well, what else has been overlooked in here? And so there again, we're giving people reasons to disconnect Mm -hmm. instead of start thinking about the possibilities or the opportunities that sit within your house. Right. And And they only really need a few reasons before they're like, oh, this isn't the house for us. Like, I feel like you get like three strikes. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. 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 Homes and people. Right. I can't say I'm that much different. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Well, that this has been super informative and helpful. I think there's a lot of value here for sellers and people looking to to sell their house. Is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up as far as um, staging and getting ready to sell a home? Um, I think we've covered primarily most of our bases. I did have a checklist that I am willing to share with you if you wanted to put it on the blog. Just some just some extra things. I mean I think the only thing we didn't mention as we're looking at kind of getting your house ready is neutralizing odors. Yeah. Like I have dogs. I love my dogs. <laughs> I don't love my house the way my dogs smell in right. it. And when you, when we're talking again about giving people reasons to connect, home is a sensory experience. For sure. And I recall when we were, when my husband and I were looking to buy a house, and there was one that we walked in, and I'm not even kidding. I I think the owner was not there permanently or in and out. There was animal feces on the carpet like nobody took care of it and oh we just gosh. walked out i was like I've abs- had that, I've absolutely had that not happen. i've had that happen it's gross yeah it's it's so gross and, and it's they, off-putting and they didn't even give the house a chance that was a one strike and you're out 
there are certain strikes that it is a one and done, hundred <laughs> <Yeah>. percent. <laughs> That's one of them for right. me. When I was showing houses as an agent, um, somebody had cooked cabbage, and I was like, "This." And I, whatever, cabbage, cool. It's There's a lot of benefits there, but the smell yeah. was not right, good. Right I mean, I couldn't even be in the house. I was like, oh, this is so gross. Yeah, you he, know, it's just, it's hard. So that is an important one yeah. that I think we don't pay enough attention to sometimes right. is just, you know, just neutralizing the odor, yeah. like because that there are very subtle things that can be very impactful in our decision making sure. process. Yeah. Make sure it smells good. Yeah, like that's important. And I think that falls in your deep clean. Absolutely. Part. Yeah. 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 For sure. Being proactive with repairs. Yeah. Super important. Don't wait for somebody to call you out on it. Right. If you know something needs to be taken care of, just get it done. Just get it done, man. Yeah. Just do it and It'll get it done. Save you money and time. At and the frustration yeah. too, right? Like just be out ahead of the game as right. much as you can. Yeah. I think the other thing I wanted to mention, carpets. Same thing with the the deep clean. I mean, if if have them clean. Have them cleaned. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you've got kids and pets. Right. I promise you they don't look great. Right. They just don't. That's yeah. just not your reality right now. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean forever, but just not right now. Right. They're probably pretty rough. Yeah. And so even just having them cleaned will help neutralize a lot of smell. And it just it shows pride of ownership. Right. And I think if you're looking at, you know, kind of some some different maybe quieter factors of how appealing homes are. I want a home that I think somebody has taken good care of. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's an important one. No, those go a long way. Yeah. You've definitely mentioned some amazing tips on getting a house ready to sell. First impressions are everything. I love yeah. the, the three strike rule because I've seen it multiple times. You're like, they can get past one or two, but the second there's three, they're like, oh, right. next house. Right. Yeah. Next. So. Yeah. Well, this has been awesome. We will definitely link the checklist. Um, I have some before and afters I will link in there and we'll have your contact info. So if anybody has any questions or want to reach out to you, we'll definitely have your info in there. And at Mountain Buff, we we run programs or incentives where there's some months where we are covering staging on listings for like a certain period of time and stuff like that. So just depending on, on when it is and everything, like we, we want our listings to shine, and so often that's something we're willing to work with our clients and really help get the house ready to go. Like yesterday, I was in there like filling nail holes and pulling nails off the wall and just trying to get it as presentable as we can Absolutely. right before photos. So. Yeah, well, and I, I think that speaks to the level of customer service that your clients receive too, and I think that it's just important to, as you're looking amongst the vast sea of real estate agents right? because there's a lot of choices. There are. Interview your agents and find out what they're willing to do to help you along. You know, it's important to have some skin in the game. Right. So I, I thank you for inviting me no, on I to Thank talk. you for coming on. This has been amazing. And uh, I'm excited to continue working with you and seeing the miracles you're able to pull off. So same. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome.